First of all, you're looking for a guy that provides a great example, which he does. You know, he's he's in that, he's the first guy in the quarterback room. He's the last guy to leave. You know, he'll text or call you if he has a question about anything. He wants to get every detail right, but he sets the standard as far as example and uh, and working at it. Uh, you know, so that that's critical. All great leaders do that, you know, provide a good example for other people to follow. He's done a really good job with the tempo of the offense and, and making sure we're getting in and out of the huddle, up and down at the line of scrimmage, getting the ball snapped when we should. Uh, he's done a nice job with uh, communication, uh, you know, in the huddle and with everybody. In the first ball games, he got pretty excited as, you, as most guys do, and their feet started to uh, do some things that uh, you normally don't see. You might take an extra, extra step in the drop. You might, uh, you know, take a false step. Uh, you know, anything can happen in that pocket a little bit when they start feeling that pressure for the first time. Going into the second ball game again, um, you know, our goals were uh, in using the proper footwork and making sure also that we're reading through our progressions as quickly as we can. You know, we, we got to make sure we just don't lock on guys. We got to continue to use our progression, and they know what to do. There's no doubt about it. It's a whole different deal when uh, when you're getting rushed by uh, you know four or five or uh, six guys uh, and you're trying to step up into the pocket. Gorgeous Saturday morning for Hawkeye football. We're at Kinnick Stadium. Gary Dolphin and uh, Ed Podolak getting ready for the Hawks and Michigan State, the Spartans. It's been a great rivalry. Two teams built the same way. Mark D'Antonio said that when he went to Michigan State almost 15 years ago. Mel Tucker's picked up the wand, and he said he has uh, a lot of respect for uh, Kirk Ferentz. There's no mystery here. 60 minutes, everybody's best. A uh, lot of intensity, a lot of heart, a lot of toughness out there. Let's go. Oh, oh. The Hawks try to uh, turn it around and get off that 0-2 start. That hasn't happened in uh, 20 years when Kirk Ferentz was just in his uh, second season. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. The Hawks will get the ball first. Michigan State will kick off. Second and short. Spencer throws a uh, bubble screen uh, to the wideout. Tyrone Tracy gets the first down. Spencer on a rollout right after a play fake has a wide open man at the 35 yard line of Michigan State. Welcome to the party, Sean Beyer. So at the 30, check that 34 yard line. Here's a uh, fly sweep with Charlie Jones, and he's got room. He's inside the 10, down to the five yard line. Charlie Jones, the Buffalo transfer, showing he's got some quicks. Here's Petrus up under center. They're going to run off the left side. Big hole plows through the goal line and into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Iowa. Boy, that's really good blocking on the left side. Now they run the uh, jet sweep and dogging it all the way is Zach Van Valkenburg. And he stepped right in the driver's lane and crushed Jalen Naylor for a loss. Looks left, now he's grabbed and fights his way out of a sack. Now throws downfield and nobody home except a Hawkeye. And it's intercepted. Now, was he inbound? Yeah, I think he was. That's Kerner. Wait a run, wait a run, wait a run. And Regani goes in motion. One running back is Ivory Kelly Martin. Petrus dumps it on a crossing pattern. First down, still running down the near sideline is uh, Nico Regani. He turns on the afterburners and gets all the way down to the Michigan State 32. Well, now that's a, that's a terrific play there by Spencer. Inside the 30 at the 29, blitz coming. Petrus gets rid of it. Kelly Martin is running inside the 20, first down 15. Still on his feet inside the five. I think they're gonna bring it back outside the 10, but it is a first down and the Hawks are on the move again. Here he is on third down, fires to the end zone. Caught, touchdown, Brandon Smith. Talk about a mismatch. Please man-to-man -man him all day long. Brandon Smith just circled to the football, got in front of the defender. The defender was in front of him, and then Brandon just flicked him out of the way. There was body contact both ways and gathered in uh, the uh, corner route. Touchdown, Iowa. Oh, 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 oh. That's it, guys. Nice job, Brandon. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah.
Stay on. Good job. They run it straight ahead, does Michigan State, and a good job getting to the outside and dropping the ball carrier for no gain. In fact, John Wagner yeah, just came into the game and made a nice play. Fourth down and five, and here's Beringer. This one's much better. High hanger, Charlie Jones. Makes the catch at the 23. He's going to return it. Gets the corner turn. Oh, yeah. He ran by a couple white shirts. 40, 45, midfield. Oh, and he just can't quite escape an ankle tackle in Michigan State territory. Tyler Goodson and Mackay Sargent both out there now with uh, Spencer Petras. They run the draw to Sargent. Big hole off the right side. Inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. Hawks are driving, leading 14 to nothing. A few minutes into the second period, they run straight ahead. Big hole. Touchdown, Iowa. Tyler Goodson gets his second scoring run of the afternoon. Boy, this is clean blocking, Gary. We just haven't seen this from the offensive line yet this year. But uh, nobody even touched it. Let me see yours. Hey, what's going on? Try to come up. Second down and short, the ball at the 35. Fake on the run this time. Lombardi's hit as he throws it up, picked off. Intercepted by the Hawkeyes. Iowa gets the ball right back. Barrington Way, the linebacker. Here comes the punt. Oh, this one's returnable, low line drive. Charlie Jones at his own 46. Goes right to left, now down the near hash mark. Wide open territory, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. Inside the 10, five, goal line, touchdown! Touchdown, Iowa! Touchdown, Charlie Jones! Is that young man something? Every time he gets the ball in his hand, it is exciting to watch. What blocking, uh, although Michigan State looked like they... They overran the play to the wide side of the field, and there was nobody home on the short side. Yeah, I think. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Here's Lombardi. Straight back to pass. Good protection. And the pass. Now he runs out to his left. Throws it away again. Another interception. Picked off this time by Riley Moss. Riley's down the near sideline, and he's got nobody in front of him. Touchdown, Iowa! Touchdown, Iowa! Touchdown, Riley Moss! Oh, he's so happy because he got turned around early in the game for that big gainer, and that one, he just stepped right in front of the receiver and took it to the, to the bank. Hawks up 34-0 pending the extra point try. Yeah, I was, I was about to dive right. in front of that. Yeah. He's on the turn. He's on the turn. Up for the numbers, baby. Bottom of the numbers. Time 35 nothing. All three phases heavily involved for the Hawkeyes. The Heartland is brought to you by High V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. High V proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeyes. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine. Changing lives. Right, again, nothing changes, right? We start right back at the start. Everybody plays as hard as they can. Team football, aggressive, tough, a lot of heart. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We gotta finish it. Dane Belton in there at the cash. And here's Lombardi. Now he's gonna throw on first down. Rush, sack. Almost. It's a fumble. Oh, it is. oh, I'm sorry, it is a fumble, and running with it is Davion Nixon. It's a touchdown. And now they're going to talk it over. Yeah, I think his, yeah, I think his arm was, I think he's trying to throw it away into the, uh, kind of a sidearm pass. It was a forward pass. However, there was a foul for intentional grounding. Third and a little less than 20. Lombardi back to pass. He's going to go for it all. He's got a guy open. Caught at the 20-yard line and out of bounds at the 15. What a beautiful spiral on third and goal at the uh, Iowa 1. They do a tight end handoff, and it's a touchdown. Over the pylon is the little-used Tyler Hunt. Here's Petrus. They run the draw handoff. Big hole down the middle of the field, and there he goes. Goodson at midfield 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Sheds a tackle inside the 10 to the 5 to the 4, and down there, caught from behind. A heck of an effort by the Michigan State defensive back who came all the way across the field. And at least for the moment, Kalon Gervin has saved the touchdown. But what a run by Goodson. Oh. 
third and goal. Hawks need to score here. Sargent on a cutback. Fight for the goal line. Is he over? Yes, sir. Touchdown. Touchdown, Makai Sargent. Here's the snap back. Look at this. Rolls inside the 10. Crawls to the three. Looks like he's been playing American football his whole life. Next first and goal. Hawks are going to run. Here's an end sweep. It looks pretty easy. And it is a touchdown running for Makai Sargent. Tyler Goodson leading the block. Celebrate Hawk fans. 49 to 7. An absolute convincing, dominating performance. Now it's off to Minnesota. The battle for Floyd of Rosedale. Good one, guys. Good one, guys. Nice job. Nice job, guys. Nice job, huh? Nice job, guys. Good one. Good one. Right, now we got a chance to build some momentum, all right? We've got to learn how to practice better, okay? This is the, the facts of the game. And if we want to move forward, that's what we need to do. All right? Is everybody good on that? All right, then the other stuff, okay? First of all, really happy for you. Earned it, all right? Boom, right there. Ready to play. All right, proud of you guys. And the third thing is, I hope everybody learns a little bit, right? Learn a little bit about what this is all about. All right, when we do that, okay, we're pretty damn good. We've got a chance to be good. That was a good start. Okay, now the second thing is, we're going to learn a little bit more about this team this week. Because we got a short week, all right, and we got a little success now, right? You have to get ready every day. You've got to understand what the target is. You have to get ready every day. You can't get distracted. So enjoy the hell out of this tonight today and tonight. Get off your feet and let's make sure we keep our focus on next Friday. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme Internet. Feel the speed. Feel the power. Feel Extreme. U.S. Cellular is proud to be the official wireless sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular, connecting Hawkeye Nation. We knew off the motion they were uh, there. Their defense like the rock and roll, so that was the main uh, focus uh, to get the defense to open up, and it worked as we planned. It looked like it did in practice, and from there it was all about just going running through the hole and trying to get to the end zone. I was just kind of looking inside. I didn't really see the quarterback, and then all of a sudden the ball was thrown like right, right to me and uh, caught it and then um, kind of brought it out to the, the numbers and started going. Um, D-line blocked uh, amazing. I know uh, John Wagner kind of got lit up on that, but um, shout out to him. Um, but yeah, so they, they blocked really well and then uh, took it to the house. It was, it was a pretty awesome feeling. It was uh, man coverage, so it was just me and the DB one-on-one. And uh, Ms. Finch just uh, threw a ball up there, and uh, I just made a made a play on the ball. And um, yeah, the corner he was kind of kind of was kind of even, so it was I was gonna have to uh, I knew I was gonna have to like do something like throw him by or something, but uh, it all worked out well. I mean, it was great blocking. Uh, Riley and Julius have been doing a great job all season. Um, they gave me time. They gave me confidence to feel the ball. Um, and it was a low punt, so right when I caught it, I saw they had their guys blocked. Um, basically, just made it easy for me. Um, made a quick couple steps to the right, and when I went left, it was wide open. Um, like I said, it was just great blocking. We we don't really have that many trophy games this year just because of our schedule and, and COVID. So um, the ones that we do have, um, it, it, it's a little bit more motivation um, for sure. Their running game is really good this year. Um, their running back is is pretty crazy. Um, so stopping the run is going to be our number one priority. Um, and then their receiver, they have they have uh, Bateman and a couple other guys that are, are pretty dangerous. So um, locking them up will be will be a big priority as well. My opinion, trophy game or not, I feel like that uh, each game that we play, uh, we should come with the same intent and the same drive to just go out there and, and uh, win. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Athletic O Physical Therapy, it all starts here. Uh, you know, he's a good veteran leader for us. And then Jack Campbell, a younger player, hasn't been able to play yet this year, but he'll, uh, he'll return. Uh, we'll be careful how much we uh, work him and play him, but It'd be good to get him back uh, in the rotation, at least at linebacker. So 
happy about that. Uh, you know, this is obviously a short week. Uh, last week was a little bit distorted with uh, Tuesday being off, but this one is a short week calendar-wise. So uh, we had to turn the page quickly after uh, watching the tape on Sunday and get to get right on Minnesota. And, um, you know, also Floyd was in the weight room, so I think that was a good reminder just uh, that this is a rivalry game. Every, every game is important. Every win means a lot. But it's just a reminder that uh, this, this one typically is, you know, very hard fought. Uh, nobody owns uh, the trophy, you know, you get to keep it for a year or this time maybe less than a year, a day less, but uh, nonetheless, it's, it's a, it's a one-year rental. So uh, it's up for grabs again Friday and we're going to have to work hard to get it. And that, uh, especially when you consider that we're playing Minnesota and they're a little bit like us. They had a, uh, you know, tough loss a couple of weeks ago, a uh, ball off the goalpost, uh, kept them from being at least extending the game. And then, uh, you know, last week really looked strong, really looked good. They played a great, great game down at Illinois. So, you know, they're, they're uh, a team that we're familiar with. I'm sure they're familiar with us. Their staff is well established. They do a great job coaching their players. Uh, they're a very veteran team offensively and very explosive team offensively. Uh, and they're good at every position, big and physical up front, including their tight ends. Uh, their, their quarterback has just uh, done a great job the last couple of years. He's just an uh, outstanding performer and, uh, you know, just a really impressive player. Uh, they're strong at running back, and uh, their running back was the Big Ten player, the offensive player of the week this past week. So that really doesn't come as a surprise, and they've got an outstanding group of receivers, and uh, number zero is as good as we'll see, uh, maybe as good as anybody in the country. So, you know, they're very, very uh, talented offensively, very experienced. Defensively, uh, they had some losses there. They had, uh, you know, a lot of veteran players last year, uh, but they've got some guys back that are still playing extremely well, and they've got a bunch of guys that are really playing hard given great effort like we saw from them last year as well. And the same thing about their special teams. Had, uh, you know, some rotation with the specialists, but their, their core guys are just really working hard. And, you know, so I think that's really representing their football team. Uh, they had a tremendous year last year. Uh, took everything for us uh, to, to, you know, get the victory in last year's contest. And I'm sure this will be very much the same. You know, we go right down to the wire and, uh, you know, we're going to need to have a finish out this week and have a great week of preparation. So. This week's Heart of the Hawkeyes feature is Ann Lau, a loyal Hawkeye fan with strong ties to the Hawkeye wave. Aurora Ann was born May 12, 217, and the Hawkeyes started doing the wave that fall. And not even realizing it was going to be affecting my family, it was so emotional. She's a miracle. She is a miracle. And Dr. Weinstein and his care team took a chance. Hi, Hawkeye fans. We can't be with you at the game this year, but let's work on being together again soon. Remember the three W's. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Watch your distance. Do your part so we can see you next year. Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.